Good morning, YouTube Booktube. This is Johnny. I just checked my YouTube channel, Saint on Fire 777, which I've had for going on 10 years. I know it's been four days since I made a video, and I don't like to stay away that long. Uh, one reason why, well, first of all, what day is today? I'm a timekeeper. Today is September the 3rd, 2024. It is 10.43 in the morning on a Tuesday here in Southwest Michigan, living close to Lake Michigan. Yeah, I, I don't like, I mean, I like to make videos, but to make videos, I have to live with my imperfections, <laughs> my verbal mistakes, my mispronunciations. Uh, I would make videos probably every day if I had a golden tongue. <laughs> uh, there are so many things I would like to share in my videos, you know, reading from books, read poetry, uh, all kinds of things I would like to do in a video, but I can't do to my linguistic limitations, my lack of ability to communicate clearly with uh, clarity and with precision and pronunciation. I just screw up all the time. And um, I often say in my videos, and maybe it's an excuse but I just, you have to come to a place where, you know, at least I accept my limitations. Uh, intellectually, I know I'm not very bright. I don't know a lot of things, a lot of practical things. Uh, I'm old. I'm not, I'm 72 years old now. I had a birthday last month and, and um, I'm not that. Uh, I'm not young, I, you know, so, but I, once again, I come here because I love books. <laughs> That's the point. What, why do you make videos? I mean, I, I'm not here to get numbers or have high subscriptions or anything. I'm just here because I love books. I've always loved books since I was a child. And even though I grew up among people who didn't finish high school, I grew up among alcoholics, uh, poverty, uh, you know, I, I, you know my life story, so I'm not going to repeat it here. So, and I, and in the mornings, as you know, in my reading, I have a reading habit. I read Christian books in the mornings for devotions um, because for me to live in this world that is, to me is totally absurd, <laughs> to live in this world to me that is just a vast wasteland, the only way I can get through it is by reading the Bible in the mornings. My wife, as you know, my wife and I were going through the New Testament during our devotions in the mornings. And this morning we finished reading uh, 1 Timothy. And then we go into 2 Timothy, uh, Lord willing, uh, tomorrow. And um, when you read 2 Timothy, it describes in chapter 3, and then the new, okay, some people don't know where 2 Timothy is. You have the Old and New Testament, you have the Bible, and as you come towards the end of the New Testament, you have the pastoral epistles, 1st and 2nd Timothy and Titus. And 2nd Timothy is right towards the end of the New Testament. In chapter 3 of 2nd Timothy, uh, the Apostle Paul describes perilous times and perilous men. And it says in chapter 3, starting at verse 1, but know this, that in the last days, now we are in the last days. The last days began at the death and resurrection and ascension of Christ. We are in the last days, the end times. 
But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, and despisers of good. Sounds like politics, doesn't here in America. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power, sounds like white supremacist evangelical Christianity, and from such people turn away. For this part are those who creep into households and make captives gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jamboree's resisted Moses, so do these resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, disapproved concerning the truth, for, but they will pro progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all, as theirs also was. So, you know, I always keep those verses in my mind, especially at this, when I look around me in, in America right now, what's going on in politics and the presidential elections and that just seems to be uh, rampant stupidity and absurdity everywhere. So in the mornings, my wife and I, we have devotions, we read the New Testament, and then, as I know, I told you, we read oh, the Valley of Vision, collection of Puritan prayers and devotions. Now, it's good. You know, if you're going to live in this world, I would, as a Christian, we all ought to be praying, <laughs> praying for not only America, but also what's going on in the Middle East, what's going on in Ukraine, what's going on in Sudan, what's going on everywhere. We are in very dark days. We are in the last days. So we need to pray in order to get divine grace and strength and to persevere and not to become despairing and just throw up our hands and, and discuss or defeat. So I read in the mornings, now after my, my wife and I have devotions and we pray, we, we go our we do what we do. I usually I try to read in the mornings up until noon Christian books. Uh, you know, I read, I'm always writing in my diary. As you know, when I'm reading, I always have my paper diary. I'm on page 745 this morning in my paper diary. Now we're in the month of September 2024. Third day outside. It's sunny. It's it's, it's kind of like coming to the end of summer. So in the mornings, I've been reading <laughs> books on the Psalms. I just really got into the Psalms. I have for a long time. Uh, I really, I, as you know, in the churches that we have attended, we sing from the Psalter, which is the old Christian Reformed Church. And the Dutch Reformed Churches, uh, conservative Presbyterian churches that are Calvinistic, uh, they sing the Psalms, the Psalter. And uh, the, the Old Testament Psalms put to, to lyrics or to, I don't know what the word is, they... Uh, so we read the Psalter. And I told you, at night, my wife and I, before we go to bed, we have, we read from this book. We have been reading from, In the Lord I Take Refuge, 150 Devotions Through the Psalms by David, no, Dane C. Orland. I did order a devotional book. Uh, it's John Calvin's. Now, I showed you, I think, John Calvin's three-volume commentary on the Psalms. And there is a devotional book where they take from those three volumes 
of John Calvin's commentary on the Psalms and they had put it in daily devotions and I ordered that. I'm supposed to get it in the mail. So after we we're almost finished with this one, we're on Psalm 147. Uh, last night we read from 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, all my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises unto my God while I have my being. Put not trust in princes, in the Son of Man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth, so that the very day, on that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is in the Lord. No, blessed is he whose help is, is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord our, his God, who made heavens and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. That's Psalm 146. We read that last night in the devotions. So I've been reading. <laughs> I, I showed you that I we ordered this set and pre-ordered my wife and I. It's uh, it's a four-volume commentary on the Psalms, Old Testament Psalms, by Christopher Ashe. The Psalms, a Christ-centered commentary, and I've been reading the first volume. Volume 1, Introduction, Christ and the Psalms. And then you have Volume 2, the Psalms of Christ and the Commentaries. Volume 2, Psalms 1 through 50. And then you have Volume 3, Psalms 1 through 51, 100. And then you have Volume 4, Psalms 101. 150 by Christopher Ashe, a Christ-centered commentary. And so what he, why is he calls it a Christ-centered? Is that if you study the Psalms, the Psalms set forth Christ. The, the Psalms set forth Christ as the son of David and as the righteous one, the suffering servant, the Messiah, the one who who reigns, the one who is the king, the one who is the, uh, the one who brings out his people from the captivity of the sin and of sin, the world and the demonic powers, the devil. So, but I did get a, um, I, I mentioned to you that we went to Grand Rapids a couple of weeks ago, I went to Baker Bookhouse, which is a Christian bookstore. And I saw a book on the Psalms there, and it was going for $50. And I said, I can't spend that. But my wife uh, can get books 25, 50% uh, off from a publisher who publishes this book, Crossway. And um, so I ordered it, and I've been reading it, How to Understand the Psalms. Uh, by P Bruce K. Welke and Fred G. Zasper. Now, Bruce K. Welke is an Old Testament scholar, and Fred G. Jasper is like a, a theologian, an evangelical theologian, and he's written an a in-depth study on the theologian B.B. Warfield, which I have downstairs. B.B. Warfield was one of the last Princeton theologians who I I think I've shown videos over the years I have BB BB Warfield's works his collected writings etc so I've been reading this on the Psalms since I got it how to understand how to read understand the Psalms so I got that now 
I also keep this, if you want a short, well, I'll show that in a minute, but. Now, what I mentioned too that I've been waiting to, uh, to be published a fifth volume in a series, a commentary on the Psalms. And I really, this is one of my favorite <laughs> commentaries on the Psalms. And it was just translated out of the Latin by Andrew M. Greenwell. And it's a medieval commentary on the Psalms by Dionysian the Carthusian. And I, every day I go to the site where Arkell Press, who publishes conservative uh, Catholic literature, they are going back to the Latin Mass. They're very conservative Catholics. And they they been they published this this translation, and volume five and six are supposed to come out. So every day I go there looking, hoping that volume five will come out. Uh, and I've read these. I think I've shown these over the years. This one, volume one, was published in oh, when was this published? 2020. And then they came out with volume two, Dionysian and Carthusian. It was translated, introduction by Andrew M. Greenwell. This is volume two, Psalms 26 to 50. Uh, and then they came out with volume three, Psalms 20, 51 to 75. The Vaic Psalms commentary by Dionysius the Carthusian. This one came out in 2022. And the last one came out, volume four, came out in 2023. The Come to Vague Psalms, Volume 4, Psalm 50, 76 to 100, Viamia, Andrew M. Greenwell, Translation, Introduction. And I really was been blessed, and I have been blessed in reading them, and I look forward to getting Volume 5. But before I read them, I, I read the Ancient Commentary, Christian you have um, ancient Christian commentary on scripture series. I've shown these over the years. This is on Psalms 1 through 50, edited by Craig A. Blessing and Carmen S. Harden. Now, the ancient Christian commentaries, they look at the uh, patristic fathers uh, and they quote from their commentaries. Like it has Gregory, and like we just read. Uh, well, anyway, it's two volumes. This is a two volume commentary. And they quote from the, the ancient fathers. And uh, this one came out in. This volume came out in. Oh. I don't know when it came out. Anyway, I read these when they came out. And then after they did the ancient Christian commentary on scripture, they started coming out with the Reformation commentary on scripture. These have been going on for a number of years. And these are the ones on the Psalms. And this is looking at the Reformation period. They look at the reformers. Not only Reformers, but the Anabaptists, Puritans, Roman Catholics, um, other uh, commentators at the time of the Reformation period. And this is one on Psalm 1 to 72, edited by Herman S. Ceres. 
I just showed you his book on Calvin's Theology of the Psalms by Henry Herman S. Ceres. I can't pronounce that name. And then there's another volume, Psalms 73 to 150. Edited. it. So you can read these. There's quotes, like we just read from Psalm, was it 46? Uh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Then it has like a little overview. This is the first of the five Psalms of praise that conclude the Psalter of each which begins and ends with hallelujah, a call to praise the Lord. Our, co our commentaries particularly seize on the Psalms teachings to trust in God alone, a theme that echoes Protestant critiques of the Catholic Church. Moreover, the, their interpretation of the Psalm demonstrates both literal and figurative readings of the text a common dynamic and reformation exegesis, particularly with regard to the Psalms. So you can read the Reformation commentary on Scripture and the Psalms, and you can look at their early church fathers. This probably goes up until 12th, 13th century, maybe 12th, 11th century, uh, ancient Christian commentary on Scripture on the Psalms. So you, you have Dionysus and the Carthusian, which is, he lived from, oh, I don't know, I, don't, I can't remember what years he lived. Uh, he lived from 1402 to 1471, Dionysus and the Carthusian. And if you want a shorter commentary, I keep this in my study, a commentary on the Psalms by George Horn. He uh, lived from, does it say what? Well, it doesn't say how his years. But this is a really good commentary, very short. Original English edition printed in 1771. This Old Path edition, 1997, taken from an 1835 edition published in 1997. Yeah, I really like this one. I keep it in my study on my desk. I could read from it, but we've been going on 22 minutes and I'm afraid that this video will just immediately shut off. So yeah, so I'm making a deep dive into the Psalms in the mornings. I also been reading from these books in the mornings. I take a break, Ancient Wisdom for Care of Souls, Learning the Art of Pastoral Ministry from the Church Fathers by Coleman M. Ford and Sean J. Wilkie. So I've been reading that. In Everyday Glory, The Revelation of God in All of Reality by Gerard M. McDermott. So these are the kind of things I read in the mornings for devotions into the afternoons. Usually in the afternoons I have lunch around noon. Then from about one until four, I kind of sit in my chair in the living room and I read usually nonfiction or and uh, and I kind of doze and I, I mess with the computer. I might go out and mow the lawn. We're working the flower garden or you know, I don't go anywhere in the afternoons. If I go to thrift stores, I usually go in the mornings, late around 10, 11. I was thinking about going this morning, but I got books coming in the mail today, which I was, I'll was i show in future videos. And I still got books from thrift stores down the lower level I haven't shown. And I kind of like just hanging out, you know, I like hanging out in the hermit hut, you know, writing in my diary, studying the Psalms, uh, just trying to stay sane in this insane world. So yeah, I really look forward to getting volume five of Dionysus and the Carthusians comment on the Vedic Psalms. I just, because I really, I was really blessed in reading these, these 
I was just really blessed and uh, and I was really blessed in reading uh, the ancient commentary, ancient Christian commentary and scripture on the Psalms. And also I was blessed in reading the Reformation commentary and scripture on the Psalms. So you can just immerse yourself in the Psalms and for devotions and you can do it all the time the psalms is the psalm book of the church of all ages the medieval monks sang through the psalms once a week calvin in geneva he had the geneva psalter one of the first books that was published when the puritans the pilgrims came to america was the was the psalter the Psalms have always been on the lips of God's people throughout <laughs> since the whole time of the church. So I've been I've learned a lot. Uh, it's like it's always amazes me. I've been a Christian a long time and I'm still learning. I'm still learning new things in God's word and the Psalms. And so I recommend this book, How to Read and Understand the Psalms by these two scholars, Bruce L. Welke. I have his Old Testament theology in my study. I have, like I said, Zasper wrote on B.B. Warfield. And check out this new commentary, the Psalms Christ-Centered Commentary by Christopher Ash. I've been reading this morning, volume one, and I've been reading the chapter on reading the Bible with the church, the Christian history, and the Psalms. So I'll sign off. It's going on 27 minutes. I hope you had the last four days. You've had been a good reading week. I had a good have a good new reading week, a new month. This is the month of September. We go into the end of summer and go into the autumn season. And yeah, so that's the Psalms. <laughs> So I'll close the right in my diary on page 745. I'm reading this this morning, and then I'll probably read some more. I don't know, I usually, I stopped reading at noon. It was already 11, 10, late Tuesday morning. I'm supposed to get books in the mail. So I'll sign off. Once again, thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments. Do pray you're all doing well. And yeah, and above all, read the Psalms. The Psalms are quoted throughout the old, the old I mean, the, the Psalms are quoted throughout the New Testament. Jesus is always quoting the Psalms. When he was on the cross, dying for the sins of sinners, he quoted and sang the Psalms. So with that, I'll close. Hope you're having a good reading week. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for subscribing. Do pray you're all doing well. And until next time, bye.